When you picture a terrible father, you probably picture someone who doesn't love his children enough. But what about a father who loves his children too much? We've all seen it, haven't we? Maybe even in our own lives. A father whose children are his absolute pride and joy, whose success is tied to their success, whose happiness is tied to their happiness. A father who loves his children more than anything else, who literally idolizes them. Do you know who that's not good for? It's obviously not good for the dad. His children will never be able to deliver what he is looking for in them. But as you can imagine, it's not good for the kids either. That kind of weight, those kinds of expectations are absolutely crushing. In fact, nothing is worse than someone depending on us for their joy and fulfillment in life. That maybe helps us understand why God asked a father named Abraham to do something that seems so strange. In the Bible, the story of Abraham sort of revolves around the promise of a son that God would give to him and his wife Sarah. And yet even before that son was born, Abraham sort of showed that he loved that son a little too much. When Abraham got impatient, waiting for that son to arrive, he decided that he was going to have another son with another woman. And when God made it clear that wasn't the son that God had promised, Abraham was anything but a good and loving father to that son. But then after 25 years of waiting, that son finally arrived. You can imagine how Abraham might have been tempted not just to love his son Isaac, but to love him too much. And so God asked Abraham to give his son up to offer him as a sacrifice to God, to demonstrate that as much as he loved his son, he loved God even more. And this time, Abraham passed the test. Rather than loving his son more than anything else, Abraham trusted that God was going to provide, that, that somehow God was going to figure this out, not just for Abraham, but also for Isaac. As fathers, we naturally think of it as part of our job to provide for our children what they need. But very often we can mistakenly look to them to provide us with what we need. Maybe by the time we enter into fatherhood, life hasn't exactly shaped up to what we hoped it would be. Career aspirations have turned into nothing more than a daily grind as we clock in and clock out of our jobs. The thrill and the romance of dating life has sort of lost its luster in marriage. Maybe life seems like nothing more than this endless list of duties and obligations. And so it's no wonder why parents sometimes idolize their kids. Why they look to bring back some of that joy, some of that excitement and optimism about life through their children. Why they end up loving their children too much. In response, I'm pretty sure God isn't going to ask you to sacrifice your children. But in a very real way, God does ask us to give our children up, to turn away from them as the source of all that we need, including our joy and fulfillment in life, to turn to Him for those things instead. In the book of Romans, Paul says this, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? The very same God who loved us so much that he did, in fact, give up his son promises to provide us with all that we need, including the joy and fulfillment that we so desperately crave. Rather than our kids needing parents who love them more than anything, our kids need fathers who are full of faith, fathers who look for everything that they need, not in them, but in God. Hey, what's up everyone? Pastor Mike here from Time of Grace. Thanks so much for checking out this podcast. Uh, We certainly would love this message to reach more and more people. So if you wouldn't mind rating and reviewing this podcast, it would bring it to more people's eyes and we pray this message into more people's hearts. Thanks for your support and we'll talk to you soon.